Okay. New Testament passage is a little shorter. Uh, it's the walking, Jesus walks on water. And Ken is going to read that for us. And we're going to look at verse 20, chapter 14 of Matthew, verse 22 through 36. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said immediately, and he cried out of fear. And Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. When, there, when those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. When he had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought back all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we're in the second lesson of a five one series on miracles and last week we looked at the feeding of the 5,000 and following that is what we're looking at tonight Jesus walks on water and the uh, real softball question on this one is what do we learn about God and uh, it's verse to me it's verse 33 where it says truly you are the son of God uh, God has power over nature he has power over everything really and uh, a very very uh, memorable story anything stand out to you about what we learned about God or people in this one the biggest thing that I can think is just a short expression God is in control yeah, God's sovereign. You're right. He is, he is in control. He, uh, he allows things. He doesn't make everything happen, but everything is within God's control. Uh, things might be beyond our control, but not, not beyond God's control. Um. Uh, an interesting part, you have to praise Peter for saying, even though he's a little nervous about it being a ghost, I'm sure that we all have a story we could tell, being out fishing in the dark and not seeing well and hear something and you wonder who it is or what it is. And Peter was all nervous and he said, uh, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, I have to think, Peter, why in the world would you say that? Because you have to have thought you could walk on water and all of that. And, of course, Jesus said, come. And he does, and he's walking for a while. And then it's kind of like he started thinking, my name's Peter. And it, it comes from the word rock. And rocks don't walk on water. Rocks sink. And it seems like he started thinking about it too much and he started sinking and he said, Lord, save me. 
uh, our faith is that way sometimes. You know, we would say, I'll never lose my faith. And yet we go through a difficult time. And sometimes it, we think, wow, I don't know if I can stand this much longer. And God saves us through all of that. But sometimes we, uh, we give up too early or start, start thinking of reasons why we can't trust God. So, he, hey. Yes, Dale? He took his eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he did, uh, he started to sink. And, you know, the writer of Hebrews tells us over in chapter 12, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, uh, the uh, author and perfecter of our faith. So we're encouraged to keep Jesus at the front forefront of our faith. Amen. Jackie and I made that trip in a boat in 2006, probably very similar to the trip that he made on the northern side of Galilee. And uh, when we left the shore, the, uh, the waves were calm, the, the sea was calm. But uh, once we got out, it was about a two hour trip from one place to the other. And uh, about an hour into that, we began to see little white caps. And shortly after that, they were more than just little white caps. The ship, you may have seen pictures of them eight or nine feet above the water. Let's remember that the boat that Jesus was in was flat because it was a fishing boat and was only about three foot or four foot at the most tall from the base of it to where the edges would be. Well, we were eight foot above the water and yet water was splashing over the side of that boat and getting us wet. Now it's, it's really easy for us to say, oh, Peter, you know, you, you should have had more faith. But I'll tell you what, if you were there and you saw what was going on and uh, the waves were doing what they were doing in those days because they were contrary, then you, you would uh, not be near so critical of Peter of losing his place. Right? I was out fishing with another man one time in a lake close to Abilene, Texas, and and the storm came up and we weren't sure if we were gonna make it back to shore because of the waves and, and the way the winds were blowing. And it can happen really fast. Yes. The, uh, the, the small mountains that are between the Mediterranean Sea and the Sea of Galilee and the way that the wind hits that and goes over the mountain and then rushes down to the water makes those waves so large so quickly and it can be a very sudden thing and of course the fishermen in that boat knew that they knew what it could be so i i uh, i'm sure this was not peter's first storm on the sea of galilee be an experience you'd never forget <laughs> well when they get to the other side of course uh, people brought all their sick to jesus and they begged him to, to let the sick people just touch the edge of his, his cloak and all who touched him were healed. And we know that Jesus is very interested in how we do physically. But he's more, even more interested in our faith and our obedience and our uh, salvation. And it reminds me of another miracle that Jesus did so that we knew he had the power to forgive sins. He healed people. And certainly he has control over nature and the world he's created, but he had the, the one thing he can do that none, no one else can do is forgive our sins. And that's, that's why we adore him. That's why we worship him and love him. Anything else for you guys that you see in that passage? Okay. I can tell you what I don't see. I don't see the fiery Peter answering the why did you doubt question with, well, you know, I've been here. I've been on this ocean or this uh, sea. I've been on this sea. I know what it's like. I know a boat can get swamped pretty easily. What do you mean? You know, uh, that's kind of, to me, seems like the Peter we know, but 
It doesn't mention that at all. No. Yeah, he's pretty, uh, he obviously has a lot of respect for Jesus and uh, pretty humbled through all of this. Even after walking, however far he walked on the water, he, uh, he was very humble. I guess the old, the classic illustration of stick your hand in a bucket of water and when you take it out, see what's left is humbling. This is uh, stick your foot in a lake of water and <laughs> take it back out and see what's left. Well, Peter is the only one of the 12 that got out of the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very... Uh, well, and again, he's the one who said, hey, if that's you, Jesus, tell me to or let me. <laughs> uh, have to be careful what you ask for because you might get what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs>